Slavery is one of the most abhorrent and inhumane practices in human history. It involves the systematic exploitation and oppression of people who are deprived of their freedom, rights, and dignity. Slavery has existed in various forms and regions throughout history, from ancient times to the present day. Although slavery is universally condemned and legally abolished, it still persists in some parts of the world as a form of modern slavery. Slavery has always been a source of immense suffering and injustice for the enslaved people. They have been subjected to various forms of exploitation and abuse by their enslavers and society. Some of these forms of exploitation are well known, such as forced labor, sexual exploitation, and physical violence. However, some are less known or overlooked, but equally disturbing and degrading. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today, we examine the disturbing ways female slaves were exploited. How would you feel if you were locked up in a cage and stared at by strangers who treated you as a freak? How would you feel if you were stripped of your dignity, your identity, and your humanity? This was the reality for many people of color who were exhibited in so-called human zoos during the 19th and early 20th centuries. These were shows that displayed living people from different regions and cultures, mostly from Africa and Asia, as objects of entertainment and education for white audiences. They were often held at world's fairs, circuses, museums, and parks. Human zoos were part of the colonial project that exploited and oppressed people from colonized lands. They reinforced racist stereotypes and ideologies that justified white supremacy and domination. They also violated human rights and medical ethics by subjecting the exhibitees to physical and psychological abuse, disease, and death. One of the most tragic examples was the Tervurian Exhibition in Belgium in 1897, where 267 Congolese people were transported to a fake village and forced to live outside in harsh conditions. Seven of them died and were buried in a nearby church. They were brought to Belgium by King Leopold II, who ruled Congo as his private colony and committed atrocities against its people. Another infamous case was Sarah T. Bartman, also known as the Hottentot Venus, who was brought to London in 1810 and exhibited as a sexual curiosity because of her large buttocks. She died in 1815, and her body parts were displayed in a museum until 1974. She was a member of the Khoi Khoi people from South Africa, who were discriminated against by European colonizers. These are just two examples of the many cases of human zoos that took place worldwide. They reveal the dark side of our history and the enduring effects of racism and colonialism. Throughout the history of slavery, sexual violence was a pervasive and horrific aspect of enslavement. Enslavers held absolute power over the bodies of enslaved individuals, allowing them to exercise force and coercion in their intimate lives. With a hierarchical plantation culture and a legal system that provided no protection, the enslaved were vulnerable to relentless sexual exploitation. Historians face challenges in uncovering the extent of sexual violence as there is a lack of legal cases documenting these crimes. However, slave narratives shed light on the omnipresence of sexual violence, especially for enslaved women. Harriet Jacobs, an enslaved woman, spoke of the consequences of revealing the fathers of enslaved children, while Reverend Israel Massey recalled how enslavers would replace husbands and abuse enslaved women. Enslaver sons perpetuated these patterns of exploitation. Elizabeth Keckley, born into slavery, shared her experience of repeated rape by a wealthy plantation owner's son. Even in educational institutions, like the University of Virginia, students engaged in sexual assault against enslaved women. 
Enslaved men also faced sexual assault as documented in a 1787 incident in Maryland where an enslaved man was forced to rape a free black woman at gunpoint. Resistance often led to severe punishments or separation from families, perpetuating a cycle of abuse. The sexual vulnerability of enslaved men and women was further fueled by Western culture's objectification and hypersexualization of black bodies. Enslaved women were paraded and exposed at slave auctions, reinforcing the idea that their worth lay in their ability to bear children. In the era of slavery, long-term relationships between enslavers and enslaved people were more common than many realize. While some may argue that a degree of choice and tenderness existed in these relationships, historians debate whether any relationship within the confines of slavery can truly be consensual. Enslaved women often had limited options and acquiescing to their enslavers' sexual desires was sometimes the least terrible choice. Harriet Jacobs, for example, entered into a relationship with a white man to escape the advances of her despised enslaver. Some enslavers even promised manumission for favored concubines and their children. However, the realities of plantation life or the death of the enslaver often shattered such promises. These relationships were shockingly common, evident from contemporary accounts and the high percentage of mixed-race individuals in the antebellum South. Diarist Mary Boykin Chestnut noted that men lived with both their wives and concubines, resulting in the presence of mixed-race children in many households. Virginia had the largest number of mixed-race enslaved people, representing over 10% of the enslaved population. Light-skinned enslaved women were especially vulnerable to sexual exploitation and were sometimes sold as concubines and prostitutes. Emily Russell, an enslaved girl, was priced at $1,800 for sale as a prostitute in New Orleans. Additionally, white women engaged in sexual relations with enslaved men, often targeting light-skinned individuals. Instances of interracial adultery were not uncommon, with divorce petitions and testimonies revealing the intimate relations between white women and black men. The 1825 divorce case of Dorothea and Louis Bourne sheds light on white women's agency in pursuing relationships with enslaved men. Witnesses testified to Dorothea's persistent pursuit of Edmund, an enslaved man owned by their neighbors, with some believing she had children by him. The absence of shock among these witnesses suggests that such relationships were not considered extraordinary. During the 18th century, laws and acts gradually stripped enslaved individuals of their personhood, reducing them to objects owned by others. The sale and purchase of slaves became widely accepted, and the prohibition of slave importation to the United States did not lead to the abolitionist movement. Instead, it increased the value of domestic slaves, turning people into commodities. At the turn of the 19th century, as the transatlantic slave trade ended, the profitability of slave labor and the production of lucrative crops, like cotton, continued to rise. Breeding farms emerged as a means to ensure the steady supply of slaves, with enslaved women becoming a valuable asset. They were expected to bear multiple children, often enduring rape and exploitation at the hands of their masters. Slavery in Japan was officially banned in the late 16th century, but forms of contract and indentured labor persisted alongside the period penal codes forced labor. During the Second Sino-Japanese War and the Pacific War, the Imperial Japanese Armed Forces used millions of civilians and prisoners of war from several countries as forced laborers. They also subjected many women and girls, mostly from Korea and China, to sexual slavery as comfort women for their soldiers. These women and girls suffered physical and psychological abuse, and many died or were killed. 
the breeding culture treated enslaved individuals as mere livestock. Male slaves, known as stockmen, were brought in to impregnate female slaves owned by others, aiming to produce as many labor-capable slaves as possible. The profitability of these breeding farms was astounding, with slave traders boasting about the number of slave children they could sell. Imagine being cut open without anesthesia, while a dozen doctors watch. This was the reality for Ann Archer, Lucy, and Betsy, three enslaved black women who were subjected to horrifying experiments by J. Marion Sims, the so-called father of modern gynecology. In the 19th century, J. Marion Sims conducted shocking experiments on enslaved black women in the United States. Without anesthesia, Sims performed multiple painful surgeries on women like Anarcha, Lucy, and Betsy in the pursuit to develop surgical techniques for repairing vesicovaginal fistulas. Sims' actions violated human rights and medical ethics, placing him in a disturbing history that includes other unethical experiments like the Tuskegee syphilis experiment and the case of Henrietta Lacks. Critics argue that Sims prioritized his experiments over providing therapeutic treatment, causing immense suffering. Sims operated under the racist belief that black people did not feel pain. Despite his contributions to gynecology, the fact remains that his research relied on the exploitation of enslaved black bodies. While some defend Sims as a product of his time, the lack of recorded voices from the women and the absence of informed consent raises significant ethical concerns. Historical records indicate that the women he operated on experienced extreme pain, with complications and infections resulting from his procedures. Sims' controversial surgeries on fistula patients, including Anarcha, were initially unsuccessful. It took him years of experimentation to refine his techniques. Strikingly, Sims began using anesthesia when performing similar surgeries on white women, highlighting the racial bias ingrained in his approach. This Sims example is just a taste of what these slaves underwent. Some were even killed to be fed to pets and as sacrifices of organs practices. Throughout history, millions of women and girls have been subjected to various forms of forced labor and exploitation by different powers and regimes. In this documentary, we have explored two examples of this phenomenon, slavery in the United States and slavery in Japan. Slavery in the United States was a system of racial oppression and economic exploitation that lasted from the colonial era until 1865 when the 13th Amendment abolished slavery throughout the nation, except as punishment for a crime. Female slaves worked in various capacities, such as domestic work, field work, textile production, and sexual exploitation. They were also expected to have children and increase the slave population, which was a source of profit for their enslavers. Female slaves faced racism and sexism from their enslavers and society and had limited rights and freedoms. These are just two examples of the many historical cases of forced labor of female slaves during history. They reveal the brutality and injustice that these women and girls endured and the resilience and resistance that they showed. They also remind us of the importance of human rights and dignity for all people. If you want more of history's long-held secrets and darkest confessions, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. From us at Bizarre History, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.